Hey everybody, I'm Emily. I'm one of the designers with The Quilted Cow, and today I'm here to show you the latest accessory in our Back Home Pillow series. Super excited to show you the Falling Leaves accessory. It is the newest one, and I can't wait to show you how that, how that comes together. First though, I need to thank our sponsors. We are sponsored by Creative Grids, Cutters, Mats, and Rulers, and also Husqvarna Viking Machines. So let's get started. All right, so let's get started sewing this together. First though, I do want to tell you how you can get this kit for this accessory. Now, as most of you know, we do have the Back Home Pillow series and every month we are featuring a new accessory that you get to snap on and off of your pillow. So the kit and the pattern for the pillow is all sold separately, but you can pick up your accessory kit on our website and that kit will come with everything that you need to be able to make the entire accessory. So it's going to come with all the fabric for the front, the interfacing, the backing, and your finger snaps that you're going to need so that you can put them on the pillow and change these out. So these accessories are so much fun to do. So let's get started putting this together. A couple of things that you're going to find handy. One is a friction pin or you can use these ABC123 pins. They are nice thin quilting pins. As you cut out all of the parts and pieces for these accessories, you're going to want to label them with the letter that corresponds with each piece. There's a lot of different pieces and if you don't label them, you're gonna be stuck trying to measure them out, figure out what they are again. So you can either take your friction pin and I always just put a little letter in one corner just kind of off to the side on the wrong side of the fabric with my friction pin or you can use the ABC123 pins and just pin the letter onto the pieces. So you're going to have two of these pieces here so just put the pin through both of those when it's time to sew them together you'll know exactly what letter these pieces correspond to. So that being said make sure that you do label everything the way that you need it labeled. So the first thing that we're going to do with this accessory is make a bunch of half square triangles. So we're going to make a two at a time half square triangle. It is super easy. So once we've got that finished, let's go ahead and continue on. I'm just going to slide this out of the way a little bit. And we're going to put together our yellow leaf. So I've got all of my half square triangles made for the edges. I also have my other pieces that I need and I've got everything laid out in the order and where it's going to go. The last bit that I need to make for this is the stem. So the stem is pretty easy. We're going to take our two background squares and our slightly larger stem color square, which is also the same color as the top of the acorn. And we're going to draw a line corner to corner diagonally from one corner to the other on the back side of, or on the wrong side of the, of the background squares. And then we're going to lay those on opposite corners, right sides together with that stem fabric. Now it's not going to match up perfectly because our stem fabric square is larger than the background square and we want that to happen. We're going to sew this one at a time. So on the line this time, that is our sewing line. So once we sew on the line, we're going to trim it and press it open and then sew the other one on. Okay, so this is the finished stem piece. Once again, I sewed on the line, trimmed a quarter of an inch away from that and then press it open. And that's going to go in this bottom corner to make the stem right there. So the next step for this leaf is to go ahead and sew all the rows together. Now, it depends on how you want to press this. If you want to press all of your seam allowances open, that's great. You can also press to one side. That works as well. It depends on you and your preference. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this up into rows. So this first row, I'm going to sew those together. The second row, I have those two big pieces, but then I also have these two small half square triangles. So I'm going to sew these two half square triangles together first and then sew that row together and then sew the bottom row together. Okay, so I've got my leaf sewn together. Now the last thing that I need to do to finish out just the leaf unit is to go ahead and add the borders. So I'm going to add my side borders onto each side and then add the top and bottom. 
All right, so now I have my yellow leaf together. So once we've got that together, now let's concentrate on the acorn unit. So the acorn unit is really pretty simple to put together. The great thing about this block that I'm just kind of realizing, just kind of thinking about, is that there's no weird angles that you have to worry about measure down this far, measure over this far. These are super simple and it's all basically draw the diagonal, stick it in the corner, so. so one of the things that I've done, or that we've done so far, we've already made our half square triangles that are gonna go on the top of the acorn. We have the acorn stem that's gonna be surrounded by these two background rectangles. We're gonna put those together, but the body of the acorn, this is the little bit of a tricky part. So the body of the acorn is shorter, or it's, it's wider than it is tall. So you wanna make sure that whenever you're putting your two snowballed corners here in the corners, these two background squares in the corners that they are on one of the longer sides. So make sure that your rectangle is oriented to where it's not, it's, it's shorter than it is wide. If that makes sense, I hope that makes sense to you. <laughs> so we've done, we've drawn a diagonal corner to corner on the back side of these two background squares. And we're gonna take these and we're gonna sew on the line and then trim a quarter of an inch away from the line and press them open. So this is called snowballing the corner. So we're gonna snowball these two bottom corners on here. I'm gonna sew that together and get them trimmed and pressed open and show you what that looks like whenever I get back. Okay, so I've got the bottom of the acorn made and the way that this is gonna to go together is I've got, that's one of the border pieces. So I'm gonna to sew together the stem with these two rectangles. Then I'm gonna to sew together the top of the acorn with these two half square triangles. Then the main, or the bottom of the acorn with these two background rectangles. And then we put all of those rows together. All right, so now I've got my acorn unit all put together. And now it's time to put each unit on each side. So I'm gonna sew the yellow leaf to the, to the left side of the acorn, the red leaf to the right side of the acorn. Get those sewn together. I'll show you what it looks like whenever I'm finished and I'll be right back. All right, so once we have our leaves put on our acorns, we are gonna grab our f lightweight fusible interfacing and our backing fabric, and it's time to finish this block out. So I'm gonna take my, my block, my finished block, grab my interfacing, and it is fusible, remember? So the bumpy side needs to go on the back side, the wrong side of your fabric, because the bumpy side is the glue side. And you're just gonna lay that on there, grab your hot iron and press that down. So your interfacing and your backing should measure the same as your block. Now I do like to give this a good press from the back side, also another good press from the top side. Make sure that everything is nice and flat. And then I'm gonna take my backing fabric and my, my block and I'm gonna put them right sides together. And then I'm gonna grab some clips and clip these together. Then I'm gonna go around and sew a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around, but leave about a three to four inch opening along the bottom. I like to make it on the bottom because it's a little easier to hide that opening whenever you stitch it down. So leave that three to four inch opening along the bottom so that you can turn this right side out. Give me a few moments, I'll be right back with that stitch together. Okay, so I've got all that stitched together. The next thing I'm gonna do is clip my corners. You always wanna clip your corners to help reduce the bulk. The one thing you're gonna wanna do though is make sure that you don't get into where those seams cross. So you're just gonna clip just to the outside of that Give it a little bit of extra thread, just don't get too close to where those seams cross. If you do, you're gonna end up with a hole in the corner and then you gotta turn it wrong side out again and fix that. So let's get these corners clipped. We'll turn it right side out and we'll kind of walk through the process of finishing this out. All right, I'm just gonna use my fingers to push those corners a little bit and then grab your favorite stiletto or your teal thingies whatever tool that you like to use to help you push out those corners. And because we clipped them, it's gonna reduce the bulk and give us a nice sharp point. So once we've got it pushed out, then we can come back with our iron and we want to press our edges so that they're nice and flat. So I always start on the seams that are all the way finished and then I come back to the last where there's the opening. 
And that's just because once I get these parts pressed down, then I can come back and fold this in to match where I want that seam to be, where I want the, the fold to be. And then just give that a good press. So once you're finished pressing, getting everything lined up the way that you like it, then you're going to come back and you're going to top stitch an eighth of an inch all the way around, and that's going to close this opening. So we want to make sure that that opening gets closed. Then the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to install our finger snaps. Now you can go back and watch the hay barn accessory video to get a full instruction on how to do this studs on the top sockets on the bottom, and then that will match your pillow accessory that needs that's got the sockets on the top and the studs on the bottom. So double check your, your pillow, make sure that the snaps are lined up the way that they should be. Make yourself one of these falling leaves accessories. Once again, head on over to thequiltedcow.com, grab yourself a kit. It's gonna come with all of the fabrics that you need. All of these fabrics and the instructions are in the kit, or you can get the postcard pattern separately. And that's, I believe, a $4 postcard pattern. Grab that pattern if you want it. Make sure that you have your pillow kit if you need it. Grab that as well. And I hope that you enjoy this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to all of our videos. Okay, you wicked and thank cool you so Good job. You made it to the end. We would like to thank our sponsors, Husqvarna Viking Sewing Machines, Creative Grids, Rulers, Rotary Cutters, and Mats, and Wilmington Prints for the beautiful fabrics. Thanks for watching.